Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're doing well. I am doing well. And we are gathered here to worship God on this Pentecost Sunday. Now, you might not know what Pentecost Sunday is, but Pentecost Sunday is the day when the Holy Spirit first came to earth. Jesus died rose again and he was on earth for a little bit then he ascended into heaven and he sent his holy spirit down into his followers on pentecost sunday and you can read about that in the book of acts chapter 2 but we do not have time to talk about that today today we are going to talk about the story of the exodus and the next chapter in it it's exciting so i would love to open in prayer so would you pray with me as we begin lord thank you for this day we thank you for your holy spirit who when we place our faith in your son lives within us and guides us and encourages us I pray that your Holy Spirit would speak to us today and would allow us to worship you with our hearts. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, we are going to worship God through music now, so I invite you to sing along if you are able and if you know the songs and have fun with it. Here we go. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior. continue to think about how the Lord has saved us. When I think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He filled me with 
the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he set my feet on solid ground. It makes me want to shout. Hallelujah, thank you Jesus, Lord you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. It makes me want to shout, Hallelujah, thank you Jesus, Lord you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise when i think about the lord how he saved me how he raised me how he filled me with the holy ghost how he healed me to the uttermost when I think about the Lord how he picked me up and turned me around how he placed my feet on solid ground it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you Jesus Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Amen. Well, we have been going through the book of Exodus. It's the second book in the Bible. And I don't know if you know, but this is how far we've gone. We started in Exodus 1 and 2. That was several weeks ago. We've gotten past that. We went through Exodus 3 and 4. See, we've gone through this whole story so far. And today... See if I can get this. We're in Exodus 7. Exodus 7 is where we're at today. And so far in this story, the Israelites have been in slavery. They've been suffering. They've been oppressed. And God has said, I am not going to allow my people to keep suffering forever. I am going to rescue them. And we've talked about how God is in the rescuing business, right? And this boy named Moses is born and he's saved from Pharaoh. And eventually he runs away to this place called Midian. He gets married and he has a son and he comes back to Egypt when he's older and he goes to Pharaoh and he says, Pharaoh, you need to let my people go. And Pharaoh says, no. And Moses, we talked about this last week, how Moses stressed out and he didn't know what was happening. And God, why aren't you rescuing your people? And God says, because I have a greater plan than you even realize. And now I am going to enact that plan. I am going to rescue my people in, in an amazing way. And today, y'all is the beginning of God's rescue plan. It is an awesome part of this story. It's very exciting. We have contests. We have magic. We have all kinds of drama. So we're going to get into that. 
But let me begin by saying that life has been a little hard for me as of late because, well, there are multiple reasons, but because one of them is there haven't been any sports. No basketball playoffs, no baseball going on right now. You know, there's just not, there's not even hockey or soccer. I like those sports too. There's just no sports. Life is just a little bit harder because of those sports missing from my life. Now imagine if somebody came up to you and said, you know what? You are no longer allowed to eat chocolate ever again. Would life be a little harder if you could not ever eat chocolate? Yeah, it'd be hard for me. I love chocolate. Man, that would make life a lot harder if I couldn't eat chocolate. Uh, or imagine if your whoever you live with, think about whoever you live with, whether it's a sweet mate or whether it's a parent or whoever it is, or a home teacher, imagine if that person, 100% of the time, all the time, they were making really loud noises. Just all your life. It's just always like that. Life would be a little harder, okay? Thankfully, none of us have that. But... If you imagine it, life would be a lot harder. Now, the point of saying all of that, all those silly things, is that today what we're going to see in Exodus 7 is that a hard heart makes life hard. A hard heart makes life hard. Never having chocolate, no sports, <clears throat> having someone that you live with who's always loud, like really, really loud, like all the time, that makes life hard, but a hard heart makes life real hard too. And we're going to see that in this passage. So let's jump in and let's start looking at what happens in Exodus 7. So God has sent Moses and Aaron, his brother, back to Pharaoh, and he says, don't give up. I'm going to rescue the Israelites. Now go and speak with Pharaoh and do as I command. So they go back. And in chapter 7, verse 8, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, when Pharaoh says to you, perform a miracle, then say to Aaron, take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh and it will become a snake. Whoa. Okay, so God is telling them the plan before they get to Pharaoh. They're kind of like huddling like a football team does before the play, and God's saying, hey guys, Pharaoh is going to tell you to do a miracle. What I want you to do is to throw your staff down, and it will turn into a snake. All right, go. So let's see if that works. They go to Pharaoh. Verse 10. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord commanded. Aaron threw his staff down in front of Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a snake. Pharaoh then, what did Pharaoh do? Pharaoh then summoned wise men and sorcerers. And the Egyptian magicians also did the same thing by their secret arts. Each one threw down his staff, and it became a snake. So Pharaoh has some, like, wizards, some magicians who can do magic. And they throw down their staff, and their staffs become snake, and they're like, well, what's up now, Aaron and Moses? We can do the same thing. The next part of the verse says, 
but Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. God showed he was more powerful than these magicians because this snake ate up their snake. Yet, verse 13 says, Pharaoh's heart became hard and he would not listen to them just as the Lord had said. So Pharaoh, even though he sees this miracle and even though he sees that God is more powerful than his magicians, he hardens his heart. He gets a hard heart. and He won't listen to God. So what exactly is a hard heart? When I say that a hard heart, what do I mean by that? What's a hard heart? Well, a hard heart is, means someone who is stubborn. If you're a stubborn person, you have a hard heart. So, for example, you can think of a little child. And that little child wants to touch a hot, sto a hot stove. All right, imagine this. And the mom says to the little child, don't touch that hot stove. You're going to burn yourself and it's going to hurt. Now that child could obey the mama and go and play somewhere else. Or they could have a hard heart and be stubborn. And say, no, I'm not going to listen to you, mom. And they could touch the stove and they could burn themselves. And that would not be fun. But that's what being having a hard heart is. It's not listening to someone who knows better than you. And especially, it means not listening to God. That's what it says Pharaoh does. He hardens his heart and would not listen to God. So, a hard heart. It's not good. Now, the story continues. I'm going to read a little bit more, and then we'll finish up the story for this week. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is unyielding. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning as he goes out to the water. Wait on the bank of the Nile River to meet him, and take in your hand the staff that was changed into a snake. Then say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has sent me to say to you, Let my people go so that they may worship me in the desert, but until now you have not listened. This is what the Lord says. By this you will know that I am the Lord. With the staff that is in my hand, I will strike the water of the Nile, and it will be changed into blood. The fish in the Nile will die, and the river will stink. The Egyptians will not be able to drink its water. And y'all, that's what happens. Moses takes his staff and he goes up to Pharaoh and he says, let my people go. Pharaoh says, no. So Moses says, okay, he puts his staff in the river, the Nile River. It's the most important river in Egypt. It's where everybody gets their drinking water. It's where everybody gets their water for taking showers and for washing dishes. And he puts his staff in the Nile and the Nile River, its water turns into blood ew imagine if you were about to take a drink of water and it turned into blood would you want to drink that ew no would you want to take a bath or a shower if it was blood coming out ew no that's nasty and it would smell really bad but that's what happens because Pharaoh had a hard heart. Let's see. It says in verse 20, Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord com had commanded. He raised his staff in the presence of Pharaoh and struck the water of the Nile and all the water was changed into blood. The fish in the Nile died and the river smelled so bad that the Egyptians could not drink its water. That's really nasty, y'all. But that's the consequence of what was going on with Pharaoh. So when we say that a hard heart makes life hard, why does it make life hard? Right? 
Well, if you think about why a hard heart makes life hard, think about that little child who touched the stove, right? They touched the hot stove and they burned themselves. Because they had a hard heart, now their finger is hurting. They have burned their finger and it probably stings and it doesn't feel good. They made their life harder by having a hard heart. Um, think about in that first part of the story, when Moses' staff eats up the staff of the other magician, uh, the magicians, they all lost their staffs, which isn't that bad. But the next thing that happened is that the entire Nile River turned into blood, and the Egyptians didn't have any water to drink or any water to take baths or any water to wash anything. It was all blood and it smelled bad and all the fish died. They couldn't fish anymore. This was not good. And it was because Pharaoh had hardened his heart. A hard heart makes life hard. <laughs> it really does. It really does. And remember, having a hard heart means not listening to God which is something that we can have a struggle with sometimes. We can fail to listen to God. We can fail to listen to home teachers or work teachers or parents. We can have a hard heart against others. That's just going to make life harder, isn't it? Not listening to God, though, is just that really makes life hard because God designed you. He loves you. He has a plan for your life. And when you do not listen to him, you're going against all of that. You're just going to have a hard life. So how do we respond to that? How do we avoid and stay away from a hard heart? The main thing is to listen to God. Listen to God. How do we listen to God? Well, there are a lot of ways to listen to God. You can listen to worship music and gospel music and Christian music in general and just listen to that and worship God through it. We did that this morning in our worship time. You can tune into these worship videos and Bible party videos on Wednesday because we're talking about God's word. We have to listen to God's word, and that's a great thing that you're doing that right now. And the main thing, though, is to live what you learn. So if you're listening to a worship song and it's talking about how God is so good and God is so loving, well then, to avoid a hard heart, we need to turn around and be good to others and love others right we're talking about not having a hard heart here today so to avoid having a hard heart we turn around and we actually listen to god we live what we learn so we listen to god we we can listen to christian music we can listen to god's word through these videos and through church services and through sermons and different things and we live whatever we learn, right? So we listen to God. We do what he says. We stay away from a hard heart because a hard heart makes life hard. Now, I want to close by saying that all of us are imperfect and all of us have had a hard heart at some point in our lives. I know I've had a hard heart at times. So, you know, God isn't here to say, you have to be perfect, and then I will love you. No, he already loves us, and he wants us to help, or he wants to help us grow and to uh, be more like him. So that's why Jesus came to earth. He came to earth, he taught us how to live, and... He died on the cross for us, and he rose again for us, and he ascended into heaven, and he sent his Holy Spirit, which we talked about at the beginning of the service, 
and he helps us to not have a hard heart. It's through God's power that we don't have a hard heart, ultimately. So we place our faith in Jesus, his forgiveness of our sins, his love for us, and his spirit that he gives us. And when we do that, when we just receive God's love and his sacrifice for us, our hearts will grow soft. They're not going to be hard. Because we're going to know God's love. And when our hearts are soft and when we're listening to God, that's when we're going to grow and become more like Christ and become who God designed us to be. So a hard heart makes life hard. But Jesus and his love in a soft heart, that's a good life to live. Amen? Amen. And God is in the rescuing business. He will help us and he will rescue us from any hard hearts that we have. And he will love us. And we just have to receive that and trust in him. All right. Well, I would like to close in prayer. Thank you all for joining me again for worship today. And I will, let's close in prayer. Lord, thank you so much for your sacrifice for us on the cross. Thank you so much that even if we have a hard heart at times, that when we believe in you and trust in you as our Savior and as our Lord, you forgive us of any wrong that we've done. We receive your love and we thank you and we praise you and we ask that you would give us soft hearts, that we would listen to you. We would not ignore you, or resist you, but that we would listen to you and obey you. We love you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. Have a great week, and God bless.